Welcome back, my crafty friends, to Lamis Creations DIY. My name is Tammy. If you remember a few weeks ago, I had asked for some help and ideas on my coffee corner, and well, I've made some projects. Let's start crafting. First, DIY craft. A little sign. So I cut this little tiny piece. It's about uh, three by three square. And first what I'm going to do is sand it all down, making sure all those little bits and pieces are sanded off. And then I'm going to cut or cut, color and paint the entire block black. The front, the back, and all the sides. I'm just using a black acrylic paint that I got from Dollarama. Now that it's all dry, what I do next is I'm going to take this stencil that I found in my stash. I didn't realize I had so many stencils. And I have this uh, baking soda and paint mix. It's kind of, it make, gives it a nice little texture. And what I'm going to do is on the top and bottom of this little sign, I'm going to stencil on part of that design. Later on in the video, I show you how I make this baking soda and paint mixture. So if anyone else wants to try it, they can. I've seen a lot of people using this and I thought it was really neat so I gave it a try and I really really like the texture like it's it's awesome I'll probably be doing it a lot more often just using a little sponge brush I sponge on the, the design now that it's all dry using my chalk marker I write in the word coffee You'll see at the end I changed it because I really didn't like the way it was written out. You'll see at the end. Then I realized it wasn't standing up on its own so I found a little square dowel, painted it black and I'm going to glue it to the back of this board using my E6000 and my hot glue. What I did when I wanted to change the words on the front, I just wiped off as much as I could and then repainted it. Craft number two. I have these three mason jars. They're in fairly good condition. I cleaned them all up, made sure they were nice and clean. And here's where I show you how I make this baking soda and paint mixture. So just taking some plain baking soda, mine's from Walmart, and some house paint. I pour in some paint into a cup and then I start adding the baking soda. I start off with a little bit, mix, and then I keep adding more until I get the consistency and the look that I want. Stay tuned to the end so you can see all the final projects set up in my coffee corner. Just using a popsicle stick here, I'm mixing it all in, adding a little more until I happy with what it looks like it's kind of like a cake mixture if you'll say then taking my paintbrush I paint two of the jars fully from top to bottom and then the third jar you'll see I do something a little different I use this frog tape shape tape it has a wavy design on it the tape is kind of like curved in a wave, which I thought was pretty neat. And here I'm showing you what the tape would look like. In that yellow spot, that's how the tape looks. It's pretty sticky. So just measuring off enough, wrapping it around the jar so I don't use too much, lining it up with the seam that's in that jar. I wrap it around to see how much I need, cut it off. I finally go back into frame, measuring and making sure that my waves kind of match each other so it doesn't look awkward or weird. And then I tape it into place. I pull off a little bit of tape 
rub it down, pull off some more tape, rub it down, the backing of the tape I mean. And then I paint the bottom and the top of this jar. So that wavy spot in the middle will stay clear. And here comes the reveal, pulling off of that tape. This is always the fun part, to see all those nice crisp lines. And any bleed through, I just scrape it off. Ta-da! Pretty cool. Then I have these, uh, they're like chalkboard stickers. They're, I get them from Dollarama in sheets. I have three of them. I wrote coffee on one sugar on another and whitener on another and then using that same stencil and the same baking soda paint mixture i put just part of a design on each of the labels then using my white paint i paint in my words now it's time to stick them to the jars starting with the coffee one I place that one in the middle with the wavy part and I do the same for the sugar and the whitener and then realizing that they weren't going to stick all that great I'm using some Mod Podge and I thought I'll Mod Podge over the sticker and then I decided let's just Mod Podge the entire jar that way it protects the paint as well and I do that to all three jars if you're new to my channel welcome we're so happy to have you I do all kinds of DIYs, lots of wood DIYs, thrift, thrift flips, and many more. Please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget the notification bell. If you're returning, welcome back. Love having you here. Now taking the lids, I went and spray painted them brown. And then using them, I used um, some craft paper and I just drew out the circles. Now taking the Mod Podge, I do a layer over top, put down the circle on top of the lid, and Mod Podge it over. I do the same thing to the other two lids. Then taking a sandpaper, in a downward motion, I sand around the edge for any of that paper that is loose on the end. So it's not all sticking out. Time to finish up the jars. Now that everything is all nice and clean and shiny, I stick on the lid, trying to make sure that I don't want to cover up the rings on there. And then taking some jute rope, I glue, I go around twice around the top, just to give it a little something extra and to also cover up where the paint meets the clear part of the jar. And I make sure to start and finish on the back. And there's the jars. Craft number three, a little coffee sign. So I had this in my stash. I was surprised I found it. It has these neat details on the side. And I'm sitting there trying to think, okay, what can I do with this? Uh, colors, what can I make? <laughs> so I decided to try and go with the colors of my countertop. So taking some gray and some black, I'm trying to make a darker color gray. I mix them together. And I paint just the edge, that neat, de the detailed edge, and the back of this sign gray. Then when that's dry, taking that same mixture of baking soda and paint, I paint the front of this sign with that paint. Gives it a really nice texture to it. taking my brown paint and a paintbrush I'm going to draw a line all the way around the sign just the size of the paintbrush I start doing it freehand thinking I could do it like that and then I realize you know what it'd be better and much easier if I put tape there because uh, my hands not that steady so using some painters tape I just paint a lot or paint tape along the edge and follow along that way makes it a lot easier you don't have to worry if your 
handshakes too much and you mess up. I do the same thing for all around the sign. And that's how it looks so far. So then I drew or wrote out these letters and I'm going to do my same technique that I always do with the carbon paper and the tape, tape it down, put the carbon paper underneath and trace over with my pencil. One of these days I'll get a Cricut and be able to use that that way. But for now, let's do it this way. I'm not all that great with doing lettering, but as I continue and, and I grow, I learn more and more. Practice, practice, practice. But first, coffee before practice. <laughs> then using my black paint, I paint in the words, but first. And then using my black paint marker, I write in the word coffee. Before anything, you got to start off with a cup of coffee. It just has to help you to wake up. Craft number four. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had this little creamer and sugar container in my stash. They're red with little white dots on them. And doesn't really go with my style in my kitchen right now. So I clean them all off really well because they were really, really dusty. And take them outside and spray paint them white. Now that they're all dry. You can still see those little dots, which I don't mind. Kind of gives it a little extra texture there. And the paint turned out really well spray painting them. I believe these were handmade because they didn't have any name or anything on the bottom, like a uh, company name. It just had someone's carvings on the un underside. And then taking my black acrylic paint, I just put black around the edges and a little bit here and there on the spots just to give it kind of like that enameled look. And I do the same thing to the sugar jar. Then with my black paint marker, I write cream on one and sugar on the other. And those ones are done. Craft number five. I have these two bamboo boards, uh, both from Dollarama. One was $4 and I do not remember how much the other one was. And then I have these two pieces that I found. Uh, I had a chair that I found in the garbage, basically. And I've been cutting pieces off of it. And I have two that are like this. So sanding down the bamboo boards, I am now going to stain it with this black walnut stain. Sorry, I forgot it was what it was called. I'm letting those dry. I sanded those two parts down as well. And I'm going to paint them white with this furniture and cabinet from Seiko Bright White. It's just a regular house paint. It's a thicker house paint for if you want it for cabinets and stuff. It doesn't chip and it sticks a little better. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I also paint the little knobs. I, I bought these... Uh, from a hardware store, I paint all four of those white as well. They're just wooden knobs. Now that everything is dry. Oh, I also distressed the, I lost the footage somehow. I distressed the knobs and those two other wood pieces with gray, black, and brown. Now using my E6000 and my hot glue, I glue down the four feet. And then I also glue down these two rungs from a chair. To the two sides of the bigger bamboo board. I also uh, put some screws in the top and screws in the bottom just to hold them a little out better because if things are sitting on it I didn't want it to fall. Placing the other part on and you see there where I screwed them in and I made a mistake on the one side but I'm okay with that. And I screwed them in on the bottom as well. And that's my tray. Craft number six. A coffee tray. So this is basically the color of my countertop. 
Uh, I had a piece that was about 30 inches wide by, I'd say, about 24 inches. It's the piece where they cut out the sink that was left over, and I keep everything. So I thought, why not use it as a coffee tray? And then I bought these bigger wooden knobs. They're going to be the feet. And I also bought these handles. They will be the handles on the coffee tray. So first what I do is I stick the screw into the wooden knob. And using black marker, I put a little dot on the underside so I know where to pre-drill my holes. And I do the same thing with the handles. Using my drill and a bit, I just pre-drill all of my holes. Four for the feet and four for the handles. I was making sure that I didn't go through. Then taking my painter's tape, I'm painting, or painting, I say that all the time. I'm taping off of an edge. And then using that same paint of baking soda and paint, I'm going to paint some stripes along the side. There's two on the side, and I'm going to do two on the bottom. Just to give it a little more extra something, because I thought just adding feet and handles um, wasn't going to do much. <laughs> it didn't look all that much of a craft. And then to protect this paint, I went over it with some Mod Podge, just so it wouldn't scratch off. Don't forget, stay to the end to see the reveal of all of them. Here I'm showing you the screw that I'm going to use to put on the feet. Just screwing it in a little bit until it pokes through onto the back. Sorry if you hear my cat meowing. She's in the house. She wants out, but she's an indoor cat. And then holding the knob to the end, I screw it in the rest of the way. I couldn't use the screws that came with the knobs because they weren't long enough, so I had to go and find ones that were a little bit longer. And now it's time to add on the handles. One on each side. And again, I do the same thing. Screw the screw in just until it goes through a bit. Then I hold the handle in place and I screw them in. Also, if you hear squeaking, I'm outside sitting in my rocking chair. It's beautiful out today. And there's the coffee tray. You'll see how I use that in the end. Craft number seven and the final craft. First, what I'm going to do is I have these wood beads. I'm going to stain ten of them in the stain color. I'm going to stain 10 of them I watered down some brown paint and I'm going to stain 10 of them I watered down some black paint. I didn't want a full paint coverage I just wanted kind of like a stain. So first I tried rubbing it on with a cloth and realized my fingers were taking off more than what was going on the knob or on the wood bead so I threw them all in the stain. All 10 of those went into that stain. The next size up 10 of those went into the brown stain. Next size up, 10 of those went into the black stain. Some of them I had to add a little bit more water because it didn't look like a stain enough. It was looking more like it was painting. So I just added more water to the mixture and swirled it around. Easy way of staining. Just shake, 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 shake. I then pour out the extra liquid and put all the beads into a box to dry. Now I cut this with my saw, just a little tag, and I paint it with the same paint that I've been using. The baking soda and the house paint. I do the front, the sides, and the back, making sure to get everywhere. And then you'll see, lost the footage again, obviously. I traced the brown marker around it and wrote freshly brewed. And then on the other side it says, uh, coffee tea and cocoa and then I write over the words with my black paint marker and you see the beads there are there they're just nicely stained not a full paint coverage and I really love it makes me think of coffee beans you got the light roast the dark roast and the even darker roast <laughs> using um, this is just some twine, I believe. 
or uh, nylon rope. There we are. I'm stringing on my beads. I start with the small one, go to the medium one, then the big one, and continue. And then I stick on my little tag, <clears throat> tie it into place. For some reason, when I was making this garland, I was having brain farts, and I couldn't remember how to make a garland. I'm sitting there thinking, do I tie this, or do I glue it, or do I... Oh, it was one of those days. I probably shouldn't have been crafting. And then cutting off an end, I'm now going to make a tassel. Using this piece of pine board, I just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. I do not know how many times. I just go around as much as I like. And then I use some jute rope and wrap a few times. And I also use some yarn that's uh, different colors of browns and a beige. Pulling them all together. Tie it to the garland. And then I use another piece of uh, rope yarn sorry and I tie off a spot on the top then I cut all my ends there all my loops and give it a haircut so it's all nice and even ish I hope no one ever gives me a haircut like that. <laughs> and there's my little tassel. My little beaded tassel to go on the tray. It's cute. Turned out how exactly how I was imagining it. Coffee, tea, cocoa. We drink all three in this house. And here it is all set up. I love it. Those jars, I'm thinking on making some more for like different seasons and whatnot, like for Christmas and for Thanksgiving, uh, for winter or something like that. I really enjoy them. They'll give a nice little pop of color in the corner. There's the tiered tray with the creamer and the sugar and the beaded garland and my nice sign. I love that sign. Some of the letters are a little smaller than the others, but hey, I like it coffee tray all nice and done with the coffee pot and the sugar coffee whitener on it with the little sign that's how you, uh, you see there on that little coffee sign I changed the words and I added 25 cents I hope you enjoyed this craft today I really enjoyed making these thank you everyone for your help and your opinions if you like this please subscribe hit that thumbs up and don't forget that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram and join me on Facebook. Have a nice day. Bye.